Welcome to Business Lines State of the Economy podcast where you will find insight analysis and the story behind the numbers. Hi. We're back again in this edition of the State of Economy podcast to do with the world of finance. Well, we're here to talk about a topic which is actually not directly related to finance, but it's becoming a daunting subject which nobody even a half a decade back thought would be such a troublesome aspect. in the business of money and to delve deep into what's really causing this how much of it is actual attrition are people using attrition to sort of streamline their human capital these are certain things which we would discuss here today and joining us for that is a very interesting person shrinath shridharan a former lender himself who's now coaching a lot of startup founders and a lot of other people interested in this business on what to do and how to shape up their careers or how to shape up their future in the world of finance thank you so much shrinath for joining in shrinath we promised to come back to you with the interesting topic and here we are something which is grabbing mind space and uh, newspaper space even digital space at an increasing rate we're talking about attrition the pace of attrition in the banking sector uh, you're a veteran in the industry since the time that you set foot to now uh, correct me if i'm wrong the numbers have even trebled 10% used to be the base at one point when i started tracking the sector also to now it is 34 and it's clocking upwards would you attribute it to fatigue would you attribute it to uh, the lessons that some of us learned uh, during covid or or has banking just changed Yeah, hi, I'm Sneha. I'm mean, glad to be back with a, a differentiated topic for a change, a topic where we can actually speak bluntly mm-hmm. as it can get. Um, yes, <laughs> banking definitely has changed. Whether bankers have changed or bankers want to accept that change, banking has definitely changed. The rate and pace of uh, digitization uh, for financial services, not just banking, financial services, completely changed. And uh-huh. in the last uh, seven years, if you notice. the biggest change has been across all bfsi it has been more in the payment space ever since upi came up in 2016 so what all mm. have changed in the background the consumers are more digital and keypad literate so which means mm. that if you talk to a younger audience uh, younger than both of us if you talk to that audience suddenly they never know what a bank branch is the yes. concept of branch banking doesn't exist for most of the customers but unfortunately yet every single bank or brand of financial services wants to increase branches in the name of financial inclusion i think digital served for financial inclusion better than the actual number of branches that's a reality the second change from the entire bfsi the background point of view the back end has been this right traditionally in the last 25 years the banking uh, banking sector or ex- for example is one of the early adopters of technology including ai yes. for many many years that's reality yes yes uh, but they built so many disparate systems a, ba- a typical bank might have anywhere between 12 to 20 different technology systems trying to talk to each other and which is why it is not funny uh, just imagine there were people in the uh, actual branches or the back office whose job would be to actually upload excel sheets on a daily basis because those two systems would never talk to each other yes but suddenly in the last 3 to 4 years with better rate access to or uh, digital access uh, some of these inefficiencies have been rooted out and covid is also done in distant during covid it would not have seen very humane to uh, retrench people and now with everything gone uh, i think this is the time when uh, we are seeing the actual reality in the last so many years that bfsi does not really need so many people that's a reality Let's also break down this attrition into three, and uh, the detail split is something that HDFC Bank, which uh, is usually not so popular to give granularity numbers, gave us fourteen fifty percent of attrition rate is what they see at the lower end, entry level to the lower end uh, employee base. At the middle, it's around twenty percent, and at the senior management level, it's around seven percent. We'll come to the mid and the senior a little later. uh the freshers where are they really going is are they going to uh, you know digital friendly nbfcs the fintechs the payment guys or they getting absorbed by consultancies who work with banks etc because i tried marrying the numbers of uh, in uh, of attrition here and the employment there 
here's a vacuum. I'm, I'm not sure whether there's so many people even hiring all these kids. Where are they flocking to? Yeah, I mean, there, I think, uh, I think we have some not so great news. Uh, I think these guys are becoming floaters. Fintechs, uh, while they recruit, they're not and cannot afford to recruit at the size in which the other traditional BFSI sector is. So that rules out fintechs. And fintechs, Mm -hmm. by the way, let's face it, they want to be far more nimble and efficient, uh, which Mm -hmm. means they want to use more of uh, digital and data rather than human beings. The days of burning foreign money is gone. Uh, I mean, even if burning Indian money is gone. <laughs> money is gone, yeah, sure. <laughs> and if you look at the conventional NBFCs, uh, the traditional mom and pop insurance companies and so on and so forth, uh, they might add people in the front-end sales, uh, usually basis a very small fixed uh, salary and uh, incentive-based structure. But a guy who's not performed in a bank might try and float in an NBFC or insurance company, but at some point gets called out, right? I mean, they can't even afford it. Smaller or the mid-sized brands can't afford if you're not performing. That's the reality. But I think the genesis is not in all this. I think the genesis of all these hires have been the last 15 years. Uh, Traditionally, we have always seen BFSI as a kind of a flag bearer for the overall aggregate economy. As long as YOY results were better than the previous year, nobody ever asked any questions, right? And we would, take, we would take pride saying BFSI hiring has increased 12%, which means Indian economy is in a good shape. Uh, I think we should stop using yes, that yes, as an right. indicator. Uh, indi- hiring in BFSI should not be an indicator about Indian economy anymore because we have moved into a digital era where digital technologies are actually doing a lot many jobs, including mid-level uh, roles in the organizations, including HR. It's not just about credit. It's not just about collect collection or the risk management decks. It is also about HR. A lot of HR activities today are mm-hmm. process driven. AI is able to do it, whether it is chatbot, mm-hmm. whether it is motivation surveys, whether it is uh, performance mm-hmm. appraisal, so on and so forth, which means don't look at uh, headcount as an indicator for health of the Indian economy. Coming back, I think the banking sector also, while it was uh, incrementally hiring, I think the quality of the the mushrooming of poor quality MBA colleges in the country in the last 20 years has been phenomenal. We have churned bodies, human bodies out of those colleges in anticipation of something will happen. But it didn't. Mm. If you look at uh, relationship management concept of most of the BFSI, especially the banks, they are, I think, uh, far their aspirations are high. So somewhere we are also misleading the youth. Their aspirations mm-hmm. are high, but they, mm-hmm. they don't have the skill set or the language skills or the communication skills. They're just thrown after, a let's say, a two-month orientation program of sorts to interact with customer. Absolutely. And you've made a very interesting point. About uh, five to ten years back, we saw bankruptcy in uh, techno- uh, engineering colleges. It was a very leading thing in uh, Madras to see engineering colleges shut down, go bankrupt because uh, they were not getting people because they were not the, the, the students weren't getting a job. You're making a very similar reference to MBA uh, colleges as well and the institutions as well. Yeah, I mean, see, with so many MBA institutions, um, I, my fear is MBA today stands for much below average rather than master of business administration. I think somewhere we have uh, diluted That's ourselves interesting. and diluted and the quality. Yeah, it, it's not cruel. It's a reality, yeah, right? Yeah. Because uh, uh, the parents have stars in the eyes uh, thinking that their, pay, uh, their kids are going to finish MBA and will get a job. And most of them cannot even recover the cost of their money, the MBA fees and living expense for the first two years. It takes them probably seven years of working because that's a salary pay scale that they get stuck at, most of them. And if you're paying 10 lakhs a year for a two-year MBA plus living expense mm-hmm. of 25 lakhs and you, mm-hmm. your first starting pay is 4 lakhs, assuming that you even get 10% annual increment, it's going to take you seven to eight years even to recover your own money, principal and the cost, mm-hmm. living costs mm-hmm. in an MBA. Mm-hmm. So what's the point of an MBA if you're only churning? Again, I'm, I might sound a little cruel. Uh, better titled, better positioned clerks and pews. Right, right. So I think this is where we have to wake up to reality saying, are those jobs being done by machines better? And let's face it, uh, Anjani, I mean, uh, let's say a fixed deposit form. There was a typical time where you had to fill in a huge amount of forms, right? To even... Uh, start a fixed deposit or even to renew a fixed deposit. 
uh, today with technology, once your KYC is done with the bank, mm. you don't need a wet signature anymore, mm. which means mm. you can renew your fixed deposit sitting at home on, on a mobile phone. Uh, so what is the point of asking that RM who has finished MBA 23, 24 years of age with great aspiration, becoming uh, almost just a typist to get fill that form? So I think we banks, BFSI also have to wake up saying, where would we need human interaction with clients? Where would we need humans in the decisioning process so that we don't delude ourselves? And I mean, to me, that's a sad part. Will we find at least one honest contrarian BFSA brand which will stand up and say, you know what, in the next three to five years, uh, our headcount will be slashed by 50% or we will remain, but we'll increase our business 3x, 4x. But we will not recruit anymore because we are going to use technology. I think that's the honest answer we are looking for. No, 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 no. I don't expect that at all because it's going to cause a lot of social and political challenges the moment somebody stands up to say that. I would think even the smallest bank stands up to say that it's going to cause a lot of uh, I agree with you. Uh, uh, I think that, so, which is why, uh, because we want to avoid the political or the social challenges, we are actually making the customers pay a price for their inefficiency or gap in truth. Absolutely. Let's touch upon the topic that, you know, we very intermittently uh, surfaced. About a decade back, I'm sorry, I'm referencing each time to a decade, but about a decade back when robots were making uh, uh, machine parts uh, in, in in factory plants when our own industry journalists had AIs writing news reports for us and so on we thought that artificial intelligence or robo robotics is going to be a challenge largely for you know these kind of service sectors and hardcore manufacturing sectors but the number it, it, when I look at it from attrition seems to be that some of the redundancies are also getting pushed out from the system in the guise of this machine learning and AI and so on. And and possibly it's a leaner system that banks are also trying to build, although they may never want to accept it. And to that extent, do you believe that this kind of attrition is also a very disguised number? Uh, I think some parts would be disguised uh, in the name of uh, AI technology, emerging technologies, so on and so forth, which is fair in the long term. But mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, none of them, if you look at uh, this quarter uh, results or the previous annual uh, reports of the banks or insurance companies, none of them have actually um, said anything openly about emerging technology being a risk. The only time we heard about attrition becoming a risk is uh, the deputy governor of RBI recently spoke about uh, so much of attrition in banking could become an operational risk by itself. Yes, yes. Because at the other end, the question that's often popping up is, where are the bankers? They used to be fed by SBI and ICICI. And the two organizations today are themselves faced with, I won't say a lot of challenge, but reasonable amount of challenge that nobody would thought would fall on them even till about five years back. So where are the bankers quite? Conventionally, we always found uh, banking that per, per se has not changed uh, in one sense over the last probably 500 years, Samsoni. Uh, if you look at uh, the concept of banking, it is pricing mm -hmm. the risk. Right. But right. today, unfortunately, uh, we have a lot of banking institutions who are averse to taking credit risk and play it very safely. If you look at the entire Indian banking landscape uh, and try mm. to draw competitive strategies between each other amongst them, mm. Mm. They, there seems to be no distinction. I mean, everybody chases the same CASA, everybody has the same distinction of uh, HNI, UHNI, I mean, it's almost mm. similar. Mm, mm. Totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, uh, let's come to the conversation around attrition. Uh, this year, I think the mean is going to stop somewhere at 34. Uh, we don't have other numbers, but I'm presuming the mean should be somewhere between 30 and 35 at best. Um, the last two years also, it was near about this number. Um, we started the conversation saying that a few years uh, uh, behind the curve, it was somewhere in the average of 10%. Do you believe that, you know, um, as employment, as the overall economy also starts somewhere picking up, we should see this attrition number stabilize. Uh, we should see real talent and nurtured talent coming back into the industry the kind of interest, I mean, when I was growing up, all my friends wanted to be bankers, especially those who studied commerce. Today, not a lot of them want to be bankers. Do you think the industry is going to get back that glamour to attract young people, the 21 and the 22-year-olds? 
So I think uh, it will continue at least for the next decade is my feeling. Wow. Uh, and uh, that's you that's that's where uh, even at high attrition because again okay. as I use that uh, loose term they're all human bodies. Uh, these institutions are not looking at them as skill sets as painful. How many of them actually go through the rigor of nurturing talent, holding them mm. on, mentoring, coaching? It's it's almost become commodity unfortunately and that's again linked to our education system. We churn out uh, very very large numbers of humans getting out of the college system without skills without attitude uh, without uh, actual hands on training and mm. so we also don't mind if 30% go get out because it's factored into the cost of doing business sure sure that's that's a painfully horrible way of looking at uh, human capital but uh, you have a point there uh, no there so- again i'm saying if you look at very interesting uh, challenge that the banking sector has Uh, if you look at uh, almost all the bank boards there is at least two, if not one probably even more number of directors uh, independent directors who claim expertise in hr and surprisingly right. banking is one of the poorly run hr practices it does administratively and compliant based human processes very well but where are those uh, global bankers emerging from this we have a uh, global bank ceos of, uh, of india uh, who have emerged from india but they were all 1960s and 70s born where are those recent uh, recently born uh, bankers of eminence repute great skill set whom where india is exporting them abroad so i think somewhere banking sector has kind of lost that sheen the last example of an indian global banker that we saw was possibly anand selva kesari uh, uh, city bank who recently got elevated for the big position next to jn fraser but otherwise we, we we are having a vacuum of global indians representing the banking arena yeah so i think which is where i think the banking as it kind of is emerging with more digital but the fundamental of being risk management and pricing the risk we will have to look mm. inward uh, i don't think indian banks need so many humans to be thrown uh, in a branch or any other function we will have to learn to be efficient and which is why i think it will be interesting if one of these branches actually get up and say this is our 10 year road map and we will cap our hiring at this so that you kind of tell the world that this is how you can judge me on and but that will need a lot of courage to do so uh, you mentioned that we don't need so many people at a branch any longer so how do you think the income talent into the industry should be nurtured because at the end of the day both of us are believers of the fact that paisa baatne mein banking nahi hota collect kare mein banking hota hai so how do you believe that talent should be nurtured if we want to see leaders emerge from the gen z and the gen y so here i want to bring in uh, one observation that i think uh, hdfc bank uh, made recently uh, when asked about attrition at the lower level youngsters level and they said we don't know what they what else they want to do probably they want to do something else and i think there is merit yes. and truth in that statement senzi is trying to still figure okay. out what it wants to do the average stint in uh, uh, corporate sector or any brand is actually reduced right there was a time that people spent the entire lifetime then it became probably two decades then it has come down to single digit right i mean people if you look at somebody uh, with about 8 years experience 7 to 8 years experience their cv invariably they have about five brands on their cv absolutely so there is uh, one end there is also the uh, societal change in youngsters jumping between jobs that's one mm-hmm. uh, so which means that how do you actually make them very effective right from the day they get in because you can't wait for six months settling in period because they're going to leave in the subsequent six months so how do we make them effective and this is where i think hr uh, in entire bfsi had to reengage themselves not the conventional way of uh, measuring input and output mm. those days mm. are gone i think we'll have to bring roi yeah. as yeah. return on impact for every single kra and mm. kpi that's mm. difficult two i don't think bfsi is actually invested time and effort on talent uh, they wait for you at a certain level uh, mid level and higher and then they nurture you for yeah one they don't do the other way around saying that let's say i'm going to uh, open a college or i'm going to recruit 1000 people every year and start filtering them like Absolutely. let's say what consulting firms do uh, or put them on a fast track saying i'm going to have fast track program for people yeah. and designate them and handle them and train them i think we don't do this and i think it goes back to 
uh, the larger aggregate statistics that each of them showcase in their results right even yeah, for this yeah. attrition we don't have granular data about age wise function wise experience vintage wise data at all the challenge is that and this is exactly what rbi has also been speaking about that the banking sector needs far more granular disclosures unfortunately if they push that pedal any more the industry will accuse them of micromanaging their performance and that's a different debate let's yeah. do it <laughs> yeah so you have a very valid point there but uh, shrian i also want to bring in another aspect into this conversation often when we speak to rms and i do end up talking to them very regularly to get a pulse of what's happening what are they selling etc they say that uh, you know their uncle never sold as many products as they are selling so this this particular rm of a private bank that i met they told me that now i'm not doing banking madam i'm just selling products usko chahiye ya nahi chahiye main usko insurance bhejna hai i have to give him this cover that cover this car ka loan mujhe bhej raha hai i mean i become a marketer rather than a banker and that was causing him fatigue that was causing him displeasure in doing what he studied to do doing what he wanted and aspired to do and which is why i think now he's moved out of the bank he's now joined an fmcg he's saying i can sell ba- shampoos better than i can sell bank products that's what <laughs> this job has taught me is that another thing that banks also have to somewhere take note of much of the entry level jobs are as you said earlier they are rm categorized i think uh, we are uh, being unfair to the english word called relationships uh, there is most of the cases the banks don't have a relationship with customers at all just for the <laughs> fact that they own the customer as kyc as per rbi guide exactly there is no relationship at all uh it is more about selling but i'm being a little cheeky here if you actually stop this concept of non bank non core product selling what will happen to the indian travel and tourism and event management companies because they depend on on the entire bfsi to do all their global travels for rewards and recognition you're being very cheeky here <laughs> yeah. yeah because uh, in the name of customer handling uh, there yeah. have been a lot of misselling which has also happened in the last decade or plus right that's a reality that misselling which is getting awarded every year in terms of trips to thailand and bangkok so it'll be interesting i'm sneef for uh, this is an idea for uh, your writing at some stage if you look yeah. at uh, balance sheets uh, of banks uh, both private and public sector over right. the last 15 years and look at the core banking income and the core uh-huh. non core banking income which is right. fees mm-hmm. revenues commissions you will be amazed the proportion has changed the proportion has ch- tilted towards non core product non- because it's more yes. far more profitable so which means they are not too much worried about casa or lending but baki sab becho and i think that is where there is another challenge uh, which we must look at right are the banks or not just bank all the bfsi companies including nbfcs uh, are they parking some of their staff in the payroll of other entities away from their core platform as controversial as it might sound i think it is now time for the regulator also to wake up and uh, look into these numbers and and as you said unless we have granularity of who's doing what this is never going to surface and this will become a larger and a larger problem because the influx of listed financial services is is only bound to increase from here on and uh, the pressure is not going to die at all it's going to compound so which means that it is far more creative accounting and actually not decreasing the staff cost at all yes we we we've rubbed cruelty we've rubbed the harshness impoliteness and everything but if we want to conclude a positive note and if you also want to address a bunch of people who are possibly listening to this podcast and aspire to be bankers what would be your thoughts what are the things what are the skill sets that you know the youngsters should really be strong at when they're looking at banks and if one wants to really chart a path in the banking sector how must they hone themselves so i think very simple uh, a banking as an industry will never die or a nation's Stop. economy is dependent on that that's yes. for clear for india's aspiration to be a, a 5 to 10 trillion dollar uh, gdp we probably need twice the size of our banking entity as as it stands today which means Absolutely. potential for newer banks to emerge or the same banks to grow in size balance sheet size is there so banks despite all the digital and data that we will use and technologies that we we'll use it will always need human beings to write the algorithms or the risk elements or how to price each of those it can't do without mm-hmm. those 
So mm-hmm. if somebody is interested in banking as a, as a full time career, they will have to be in this for the long haul. Um, which means don't look at banking as a industry to work in less than ten years of time. You are not going to learn much about it just by being in that banking or a branch for one or two years. Assume you are an expert. For you to figure out, are you a good banker? Do you want to continue? Do you want to move to the corporate finance side or the corporate side? Give it mm. time. Two, I think um, analytical skills and communication skills. Uh, bankers are, are, are always expected to be good communicators, right? I mean, whether you deal with corporate clients, SME clients, mm. retail clients, you got to communicate. And I think. Uh, communication is underrated, so I think the sector is ripe for good talent uh, in the next two decades. We can't do without banking, or, and not just banking. Uh, the rest of the BFSI sector completely. Absolutely. So while you believe that the high attrition may continue to remain a feature for the industry for the foreseeable future, you also believe that this is going to be the future for Gen Z and Gen Y to really look at from a career perspective. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, by jumping ships and jumping companies every year, every two years, they're not going to figure out are they an expert in finance. Right. Thank you so much for this conversation. Um, it was it was fabulous. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thanks, Enjoy so much. this.